Hey guys. How you going, mate? Great. Right. Okay. Nice to have you guys both back in the air. Good to see you. It's Thanks, been mate. a long time. Back on the hello Thanks term. Time. Absolutely hello term. Yeah. It's changed a bit since you guys were last here. Yeah, look, the memories coming here, you know, driving from the Central Coast, which, uh, which is about an hour and 20 minutes away, and it was the first club off the highway for us, so that's where we ended up coming to, and I'd get ready at home, be ready to go, I'd jump out, put the boots on, and then run out there and play. So there's you know, some of the, you know, the great memories I had of travelling all the way down in your Pennant Hills gear and, and you know, ready to go to play, and then you head back home all dirty as well. <laughs> The biggest difference you had between now and as you had this mop of curly hair that stood out. <laughs> I didn't want to mention that. <laughs> it was a standout. No? Yeah, it, yeah, uh, well, maybe Saturday. that's what got me drafted, maybe. I, was I think every Saturday they the say, hair. get the kid with the curly hair. Yeah, no longer there anymore. <laughs> I fell in love with this sport. You know, when I think back of my memories as a junior, it was just really having a lot of fun. And you know, at 15, I had to make a decision. You know, what I wanted to do, whether it was rugby league or AFL. And in a short space of time, over a couple of years, you know, AFL was well and truly the, the most enjoyable thing I was doing. It's quite a narrow ground, isn't it? It's it is, yeah. Narrow yeah. ground, but it would always hold noise very well. And we've got the undercover bit there, but there was always a couple of teams, a lot of parents there. And it used to get quite noisy, I remember that, it was quite, you know... It was You're right, I think the, uh, the atmosphere that the, uh, the ground here created was quite unique in itself, not only as junior footy, but with yourself playing senior football there as well. Definitely, I, mean, I played seniors as a 16 year old, so for me that was, that was incredible, like you hear that. Still the same size. Still the same size, <laughs> no, no, I was yeah. actually this time <laughs> 16, I was tiny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his trademark for me was his tackling. I think that's something he, uh, he learned from playing league and from his dad, but he was a fierce, fierce tackle of the ball. I remember seeing him tackle guys as a 16 year old that were men and bring him to the ground. Some would say that I haven't really changed too much um, through them, but no, I was a competitor, you know, I used to love running around and tackling and even when, when I was playing senior footy, uh, I was the smallest kid on the team, but I used to try and give them all. This is to McVay, that's bending the right way, that's a goal! My memories of Jared McVay are a, uh, uh, had a unique shimmy, Bork, I think he still uses that these days. Sold some foot candy, went the right foot banana. You know, this, this Bork to the right with his hand and the, the step off to the left, it fooled a lot of young players during the, uh, the years I had. I think I used to get the ball a bit and try and take him on and balk around a few people and stuff like that. I think I, well, I still try and do that now at training anyway. Um, you know, there's no pressure on at training. But, yeah, you know, obviously a midfielder who, who likes to run with the ball and, and, you know, get after the ball, really, because that's what it's all about when you're young is just, you know, see how many touches you could get. So, Joe, what accolades can you remember during your junior footy that you might have uh, chalked up? Uh, I think I got a couple of BNFs for the club and then maybe one for the, the whole league and then I got a best on ground in the grand final in the under-12s for an undefeated season. So that was... Um, you know, good memories playing in grand finals. We actually played in a lot, you know, which is you know, fantastic as a young kid, but to be rewarded for playing a good year is always a nice and special feeling. No, my accolades weren't as deep as Jared. So, <laughs> I think maybe one BNF and a runner up, and, and said that was about it. Shaw kicked it alive. McVay gets a look at the goal with a right foot banana. He's kicked it. One of the goals of the year. McVay out to Jack. One after another after another. The Swan start with Sparkle. It's Kieran Jack. To have you guys as co-captains of the Swans coming from this junior club, it's a pretty big feather in their particular cap. Yeah, look, we've spoken about that as well. You know, two kids from the same club. Um, you know, growing up to, you know, for the club we both supported to, to be captains, to be co-captains is, um, you know, a real feather in the caps for the, you know, you know, you know for Pennant Hills. Oh, ferocious stuff, Lenny Hayes. For a tiny club in Sydney, we produce quite a few players, and. Um, obviously, Lenny Hayes was, was the big one that came through, and, and Stephen Carey. Oh, yeah, and of course, my brother Brandon, who I don't know how I could forget him. Um, this is his third year on the list now, so. You know, my brother, you know, four years before me, played here, and, and a guy who played for Richmond, Ray Hall. He wasn't here for long, but he also played AFL, and, you know, a huge effort for a, you know, such a small club to, to have so many players playing AFL. Um, and being in Sydney, too, is a, you know, is a really good thing. What are your memories of the surface here? Well, you just hoped if it was going to be wet that it wasn't raining the night before because we'd get called off. It wasn't like Melbourne, you know, be able to play in anything. But when you, you turned up and the whole centre was, you know, that hard, sticky mud, it wasn't ideal. But it was always fun when you're a young kid sliding around and, and playing in the wet and then, you know, getting the showers after and you're fully muddy and, and then driving home. So it was always good days. 
was either a mud pit or it was a dust bowl. Yeah, you're just... bouncing the ball and it either stays flat or goes over <laughs> <laughs> Back in the change room, so has it changed any of the years you've been uh, away? It hasn't changed. It hasn't. I think I used to sit in this corner here <laughs> back in the day. The same, Still smells the same. Can either one of you recall any good sprays here at any stage? Well, we didn't lose many games, so was, there wasn't too many sprays, but there was one time you reckon your hand's still sore yeah, from I it. remember one here where I think we were down playing pretty bad football, and you know, I remember bashing my hand down on steel table. Didn't show the boy you guys anything of pain, but we just walked out. It was pretty sore, so we saw for a while. Yeah, look, I remember used to uh, the showers used to fill up, and it was almost like a swimming pool. Yeah, man used to was. swim around in there to, to get the dirt off. We used to have flooding, and we used to be you know, splashing out afterwards. The ice bars in the bin. The bin's probably still in there. It probably is. Yeah. yeah. You gotta stick to them like glue. Yeah, Peter Jack was probably, you know, my only coach, or was my only coach at this footy club. So we went undefeated for a couple of seasons, and made, you know. We won some grand finals, which was always good, but always a coach that wanted um, you know, the best out of his players. Oh, Peter Jack, um, actually confused. They thought he was my father for, for, for a few years. <laughs> but yeah, the club's stored and, the, and the, this club's been built on, on people like him. Keep it down the flats. Don't put it back in the centre because they've got a pack in there. And they're still supporting us now too. You see uh, Judy at the game, his wife. Um, you know, cheering our name when we run out. So it's Yelling always... abuse to opposition <laughs> players. She's, so, she's, yeah, she's, so she's always looking after us. Uh, my wife and I are very passionate Swan supporters. And, uh, yeah, with great pride, we follow both the boys. Uh, every time we go out to the ground, uh, there's a kiss and a hug for my wife from, from Jared and Kieran. It's something we look forward to, and it's pretty special when we go out there and actually uh, you know, watch them on the ground running around on the red and white.